I want to sing something this morning. It's an old song, but you'll recognize it. And they're going to accompany me and play. But it actually talks about it. It says, My Tribute. And what a, what a great song that talks about giving thanks unto God. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you give to prove your love for me. And the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to Thee. the the show a while back called Mythbusters and they actually had a show on TV we actually went to camp a few years ago and the theme was Mythbusters and uh, when we went to camp and uh, this Thanksgiving I, I got thinking about it. I said you know uh, I was thinking this past week and I was thinking of some things and and as we got to thinking I, I want to share with you some common myths and then we're gonna we're gonna read our text here but some common myths that the croak of a duck defies the laws of physics by not echoing. That's what someone says. It sure does, said so there. Test the theory, grab a duck, take it in a tunnel, and start up a conversation, then apologize and take it back. All right, it, it's not true. Here's another one. That 45% of your body heat escapes through your head. It says only about after a study, a U.S. military study that came from the 1950s, in extreme cold, they covered up everywhere else but their head. It said, but since that time, a 2006 study discovered that in normal circumstances, children let out 10% of their body heat from their noggin. You say, well, children's got a head full of hair. Hey, 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 hey. All right. 
Now turn your Bibles to Isaiah 55, and let's stand in honor of the reading of the Word of God. Isaiah 55, we're going to read verses 6 through 9 this morning. Mythbusters, we're going to get in some myths today. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to, it said, upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And this is our key verse. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways, what's that next phrase? Higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. Let's read that last again. It says, so it says, uh, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are what? My ways higher than your ways. And what? This week, the Museum of the Bible opened in Washington, D.C. I want to go see it. And uh, I really, I really would love to go see it. And it's actually open. They go all the way back. And uh, they've got the one that came over on the Mayflower, uh, the Bible there. They've got a lot of things out there. But they said, this time in American history is the lowest time since we've had, statistically, that people actually know their Bibles or read their Bibles. Basic facts now is lower than ever before. You think that's right? You say, why is that so? Well, one of the main reasons is, is that, believe it or not, public school was founded so people could read the Bible. What? It really was. That was true. It was founded because people couldn't read the Bible, and they actually founded it so that people could learn to read. The Bible was a textbook. I know. And now it's still a textbook. Amen. It's still the best textbook. But... We will find out today, we're going to look at some myths, and uh, we will actually answer them from the Word of God. I'm just going to give you a couple, because we could go for a while on this this morning, but I'm not going to give you all those. Myth number one, God understands, understands or is okay with put in front of Him. <laughs> you can fill in the blank. God understands or is okay with us putting in front of him. You can fill it out the gap. You can fill out the, you, you can fill in the gap with anything there. Let's have some ideas. What can what what are some things people put in that in front of God? Family, sports, money? What? Sin. <laughs> Phones? Oh, you know, a church a, a pastor friend of mine actually they had to they they wi they uh, have Wi-Fi in their services and they had to put a to to broadcast their services and they had to put a separate channel in because everybody was taking up all the Wi-Fi uh, on Facebook and and playing games so they had to put another one in to be able just to be able to broadcast their service. You don't think people would put phones above God, do you? No. <laughs> All right. What's something else? Give me another. Put themselves in front of in before God. Anything else? We've got self, money, spouses in front of God. <laughs> Throw something at him, Amen. I, but put food in front of God. Relationships. They put things. Sports. We said we put all kinds of things in front of God. Well, let's see, that's, that's a myth, but let's look at the scripture. Matthew 6, verse 31 to 33, that's a myth. You say, God's okay, or he understands with this in front of him. That's a myth. Do we come up with our own, the Bible said a fool's way is right in his own eyes. Do you know that? But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Well, let's look at scripture. Matthew 6, in verse 31. He says, Wherefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Brother, you, you must be in on, in on this one. All right. Yeah, somewhere along. 
or what we shall drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed. Look at the next one. For after all these things do Gentiles seek. We're Gentiles, so we go after that stuff? I know I do. He says, For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. So God knows it. But here's the scripture. But seek ye what? First. The, but seek ye second the kingdom of God. Is that what it says? But seek ye third or fourth the kingdom of God. But seek ye when you got time. But seek ye when you don't have something else to do. But seek ye when nobody's dropping in. But seek ye, what's that word? First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You say, yeah, but I know more than God. You know, by our actions, that's what we're saying, isn't it? You know, sometimes I think that the Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. But those are myths that, that we tell ourselves that God understands. The, let me, somebody actually told me one day. I told somebody a situation that I was going through. And I said, yeah, but in my situation, God knows. And somebody busted my, I mean, they popped my bubble big time. They looked at me and said, God doesn't personalize how he feels for you. Well... If it's right for everybody else, guess what? It's right for, and I was like, I don't like that. And right now, I don't like you. <laughs> you know, because I, I like what I like. And the Bible talks about it, how that, that every man's way is right in his own eyes. We can always come up with a reason why we're right. You know what I found? The greatest truth that I found out in my life, when I'm wrong before God, I don't try to explain to Him anymore. I just say, God, I'm wrong. You say, what, what does that do? It acknowledges that I realize that at least there will be consequences. I will reap what I'm sowing or I will end up, or when I'm in trouble later because of it, at least I didn't lie to myself and say that I'm all right. I at least said, God, I know what I'm doing, and it's wrong, and I'm going to do it anyway. You say, well, that just sounds plumb rebellious. I know, but at least I'm admitting that I'm rebellious. We all have a problem with that. We all have a problem with that. Seek ye first. Here's a myth. Left to gravity, a fallen penny will turn into a white hot meteorite that'll sear through the skull when dropped off the Empire State Building. Anybody ever heard that? I have. I always wanted to try it. Some of you, there's other, there's other men here that's boys that thought about, that has thought about. You be honest, amen. It's like, man, you heard it, and you're like, man, I would not want to ever get caught doing that. All right, here we go. A BB, all right. Because it only weighs about a gram and would tumble as it fell through the air, a coin wouldn't actually gather that much speed. It would hurt if it hit you in the head, but it's not going to kill you. Isn't that something? You're like, oh, man, now I've got to try it. All right, here we go. Mm. Here's myth number two. Look in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10. God only wants me to give after I have left, after my expenses and my recreation. <laughs> you say, preacher, you never address this on a Sunday morning. You're here this morning on Thanksgiving. The treasurer said amen over there. I heard that. <laughs> Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the last fruits of all thine increase. <laughs> with the after fruits, with the rotten fruits, with what's picked up off the ground, with, no, honor the Lord and thy substance with the what? Come on, y'all not saying it out loud. Run, honor him with what? The first fruits. First fruits. I say it in, 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 all right. Did you realize that in the Italian prophet Malachi, it's actually pronounced Malachi. 
I've always wanted to call him Malachi. Amen. In Malachi, it said, well, a man robbed God, and it said, yet ye have robbed me. But he actually goes on and said, bring all the tithes in the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me. Did you realize that there's only one scripture I ever find in the Bible where God says, prove me? That is the only scripture I find from Genesis to Revelation where God says, put me to the test. The rest of them, he doesn't say that. He asked you to prove him. Huh. I don't know about you. I don't Prove me, saith the Lord. The treasurer didn't tell me to preach this. I actually talk to the Lord about what I do, but it's a myth. Did you realize if you go back to the book of Leviticus, somebody said, oh, well, tithing was under the law. If you go back under the law in Leviticus and go back under the law, did you realize if we wanted to go under the law, the law would allow people to use God's tithe for something else? You say, he did, sure, but you had to pay back one-fifth, which is 20%. Ooh, that's serious, amen. That gets serious. You say, why would God, why would God tell his people to do that? Well, number one, he's, it requires faith on our part. Did you realize being a Christian, we are supposed to put God first in every area of our life? Christianity in the United States of America, we've got God on the back burner. We've got God at the very end. My dad was a house painter, and I love that my dad would give me a dollar. We had those envelopes that had the numbers on them. Y'all remember those? They, everybody had a stamp number. You, you got a number. And it had Bible reading, Bible wrought people, you know, and everybody would sit there and check the little boxes off. Did y'all do those here? And we did those, and uh, we had those little boxes. And Daddy gave me a dollar for my allowance. I, I guess that was allowance. I, he worked us pretty good, but that was, that was what he gave us a dollar. And he would take a dime of it, and he would say, all right. He'd put it in that little envelope when I was a little boy, and he'd fold it. He'd say, that's God's. You give God's his first. And I got that when I was that big. I, my dad wasn't a preacher. They wasn't a preacher in my family. He was in construction. But do you know that growing up, I never, ever, if you're in construction, you're feast or famine. Anybody in construction around here? Any trade, you're feast or famine. That's the way it is. That's, that's just the way it is. That, it's going, you're going to not be able to get to all your work, and then you're going to have to hire people, and you work for you to do stuff around your house because you don't want them to go work for somebody else. Say amen. <laughs> you, you find stuff for them to do, or you're going to lose your workers. That's just the way it is when you work for yourself. It's, it's, it's feast or famine. But my dad, I never remember a day that my dad didn't have a job to go to. Dad always taught us you put God first. You put God first. The Bible says on the condition of that, he says, if you'll prove me that I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits from your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Here's a myth. Caesar salad was named after Julius Caesar. You say, that's a strange thing to go after tithing. Not only was it not named after the famous ruler, it was even invented in Rome. Ooh. The Caesar salad was actually named after a chef named Caesar Cardini in 1924 at his restaurant in Tijuana. Now, every time you eat a Caesar salad, don't give Caesar the credit. Give Chef Caesar the fact. Here's one, baby birds. They, If you touch a baby bird out of the nest, the mama will smell humans and never come back to it. It's a misconception. It said birds do not have a great sense of smell. They aren't really bothered by it. If you find a nestling baby bird who are fuzzy and featherless, gently place him back in the nest if you can find it. And if you find a fledgling, if anybody knows what that is, then it is best to leave it alone as it's part of the fledgling's natural development to spend some time on the ground as it learns to fly unless you have a cat or a dog close by. <laughs> Amen? That last phrase was mine. <laughs> and it rhymed. Myth number three. God won't really send someone to hell just because 
he or she is not saved. That's a myth that many people believe. Look in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. Let me give you this scripture. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of what? Yeah. Just because just man believes it's right, don't necessarily mean it's right. John chapter 3, verse 18, probably the most known scripture is John 3, 16. Y'all could quote it together for me. For God so that he gave his only begotten that whosoever believeth in him should not but have. All right, y'all know that. Next verse says, For God sent not his Son in the world, condemn the world, but, what, John three seventeen, But that the world through him might be saved. Now verse 318. He that believeth on him is not, aren't you glad? But he says here, he said is not condemned, but he that believeth not is what? Condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The Bible says that a man is, God does not send you to hell. You are in sin and you're condemned already. We're, we're, we're born when we realize that we're old enough to do wrong and make decisions in our life and we, we make those decisions, we have a death sentence from that point because God does not allow sin into heaven. And because we are sinners, He cannot let sin. If God let sin into heaven, heaven would no longer be heaven. Heaven would turn into earth if he allowed sin in heaven. You say, well, if God cannot allow sin in heaven, how can anybody go if we're all condemned? Because we all are, because the Bible said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. Everybody here is a sinner. We're all condemned. You say, well, that's just a wonderful thought. Let's have prayer and go to Thanksgiving dinner. I don't want to leave you there. But we are condemned. We're condemned already. You say, why are we condemned already? He said it in our text, because we have not believed in the only begotten Son of God. God sent His Son because we were under a death sentence. Do you realize that's why Jesus came? Because man could not get to God because God did not allow sin. And Jesus said, I'm without sin, and what I'll do is I will go and show that man can live a life, a sinless life, and then at the point of death, I will take all of their sins that trust me and put them on me. <laughs> and at that point, I'll die. But Father, I'll pay for all of their sin. <laughs> you say, why? Why did he do that? Because without him, we had no hope. <laughs> it just became not archery season. In archery season, if you shoot a, an arrow and you miss this far or you miss this far, you still what? You missed. If you're catching a fish and you really men and he gets 40 foot or he gets a foot, he still did what? He got away. You say, no, if he got a foot, I caught that fish and released him. <laughs> yeah, that's like putting. If it's the length of the putter, it's, it's in the hole. We just count one more stroke, and they just pick up the ball. Amen. Some of y'all got them long putters. <laughs> Seven-foot putters, you lay it down, God, it's the length of a putter. That's it. Put it, put it in the bag. But it does not matter how close you get, you still miss the mark. And if God said the mark is perfection going to heaven, you say, well, I'm not bad as so-and-so. Okay, he missed a long way. You missed a little bit, but you still, you still missed. <laughs> you say, well, I'm not bad as those folks at that church. Hey, you're not going to give an account for them. Everybody that goes to church is not going to heaven. 
You say, well, I'm not going to church because there's hypocrites there. I'd rather sit in church with a hypocrite than all eternity. Amen? There is hypocrites in church, no doubt. But they're at Walmart, too. Amen? They're at the restaurant you ate at yesterday. They're at the grocery store where you shopped. They're at the doctor's office where you were sitting in there. We went on a medical call yesterday or the other day and picked up a bag full of guys' medicine. And one of the things was the ambulance driver asked him, said, you don't take your medicine, do you? He goes, uh-uh, not very often. <laughs> I mean, but yet he wanted the ambulance to take him where? To the doctor so he can go up there and not listen to what he tells him to do. Amen. Oh, me. Oh, my. It doesn't matter. But what we understand is, is it doesn't matter how far. There are hypocrites everywhere. But the Bible, Jesus said that without me, you've got to believe in me. You've got to believe that I did that for you. You say, why would he let sinners into heaven? I mean, I know I'm not worthy. I am just an old filthy, wretched sinner. I, why would God? You don't know what I've done. No, and I don't want to know what you've done. I will think less of you. You say, well, you, oh, I can't believe that. And you would think less of me if I told you everything I've done. Amen. Well, you say amen. You don't know what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> the statute of limitations is run out. Amen. But every one of us are sinners. But a myth is that God would not sin. God would not let anybody go to hell. Listen, folks, I believe with all my heart that many people breathe their last breath in and wake up on an eternity, and they're headed to a, li to a life of fire and brimstone. You say, I don't believe it. This week, the lead singer of ACDC died, and they're all memorializing like he's some great thing. He sung Highway to Hell, and he's probably there right now. Now, I don't care if the news media and CBS and CNN all make him out to be some hero, but he talked about he wanted to be back in black and in places that, that, that what he sang about, if he is anything really like what he sang about, he is in a place right now where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And they may be on the news saying, great guy, I want you to know, I'm not going to that place. I'm not going. I'm not going. You say, you can't, you don't, you can't judge him. I'm not. I said, if he is the person that he sang about. I don't know his heart. There is only one that knows his heart. All I see is the fruit that he bore. It's probably, probably a good chance he's not the kind of tree. He's not an undercover tree. He's most likely what he bore. Amen. But the world makes a big thing. It's a myth. I want you to know, I'm so glad, though, that it's not a myth. We have God's Word that we can know that we know that we know. <laughs> we can know that we have eternal life. I don't have to think so, hope so, or maybe so. I know. Somebody told me one time, said, Preacher, nobody knows for sure. I said, that's a lie. I said, how do you know? I said, because I know. He said, the Bible says, I've written these things unto them that believe on the name of the Son of God, that hereby you may know that you have eternal life. I didn't think it. The Bible says it. I've wrote these things, and it said, if you believe on Christ and what he done for you, and you got forgiveness of your sins and put them on Christ, you got eternal life. I'm glad I've got eternal life. I'm not getting it. I got it. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, <laughs> we shall be like him, or we shall see him as he is. The Bible says that I'm an heir and a joint heir with Christ. The Bible said that I have, I have committed things unto him, that he will keep that that I have committed unto him against that day. My question for you is, <laughs> are you going to rely on your understanding, or are you going to rely on God? Are you going to rely on what you think? Or are you going to rely on what God thinks? Because God said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. You know what? 
one day when you stand before God, and He says, why should I let you into my heaven? He's not going to say, you're not going to get a chance to say, well, I think or I thought. <laughs> He's going to say, is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? That you believed on the name of the Son of God and trusted Him.